Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to continue working on the Lego City. First off, check out which train I've got going here. First time that this train has been going around any Lego City. It actually never went around the existing one just because of its nose. It was too big to fit around some of the curves in the existing layout. But it has no problem going around this layout. So it's making its way by the countryside and this is the area where I wanna continue working today. Got this creek that needs detail. It's not connected to the creek that comes down the mountain there. And then there's this exposed 48 by 48 base plate here. Or there's actually like three of them. So I want to mill plate all that. I want to raise this up so it matches the look of this giant module with the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves house on it. And just sort of fix up this area because the train yard, it's, it's not done. It looks good though, it looks presentable. But then when you look from this perspective, it's like, ooh, what's going on here? We've got like a bunch of light gray, a couple sets placed loosely on there, and a creek that's just black plate. Doesn't look too good. So the first thing I wanna do is actually replace these IKEA boxes, because these are what this giant mills plate is sitting on. And I've always said to myself, what I should do is make a wood platform that's gonna support two, four, six plates. And that's gonna be approximately 45 inches, which is three plates by 30 inches, which is two plates. And in order to replace this, I need to create a platform that's the same height of this. And that is, believe it or not, 56 millimeters. You wanna see something wild? So in order to build a platform for that, I'm gonna build it using this three quarter inch malamine right here. So three quarter inch melamine, got my cut marks on the opposite side and my cut lines. So I'm getting ready to cut that. I'm like, okay, I gotta calculate the thickness of this wood and then figure out what the risers are gonna be, like the height of the risers so that it matches up with the Lego math because you don't want gaps. So I discovered that the three quarter inch is 18 millimeters and I need an additional 38 millimeters, don't mind my eight there, to equate to 56. And it turns out these on their side are 38 millimeters. So this on its side plus this is the same height as six Lego bricks or that Ikea box. Pretty wild how that just works out. So I got my giant Ikea box made, it's right over there. Got the camera guy here, his name is Kevin, the brick building biker. He's got some McDonald's Crocs on. The Burger Bandit. <laughs> and now it is time. It's just a treat, it's just a treat. It's still good, it's still good. Yeah, so if I replace all these boxes that like to move around with the wood platform, I think it's gonna be a lot better. So we're working on the jumbo plates now. We've got a 48 by 48 there, which is two bricks tall. That's gonna be the treehouse plate. This one is gonna be the Winnie the Pooh plate. So Winnie the Pooh is gonna go about there. I'm framing out a little divot here, so it's not just flat. Up here is pretty much gonna be flat because the tree house is huge. And it'll be elevated a bit off the ground. But this one, such a small little set that you can build a little sinkhole right there. Is that the right word for it, a sinkhole? I really don't think so. It's like a slough. Winnie the Pooh's slough. There you go. See how you got Winnie the Pooh and out front of his place, he's got his slough. <laughs> so I've started adding some detail there, just some miscellaneous colored plates under there, like the olive green, sand green, some reddish brown, and then covered it with the trans light blue tiles, added some vegetation around it. And then I've also started adding some more vegetation around as well. We've got some trees and bushes and leaf elements. I'm gonna absolutely plaster the entire countryside with all sorts of vegetation, trails, and all that sort of detail, similar to what the uh, campsite used to be, campsite and countryside. It's funny though, because the campsite used to include the countryside, but now there's gonna be like the countryside and the campsite's gonna be included in the countryside. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like a lot bigger now. Uh, so the tree house was actually put right onto the mills plate. So for, for example, the two by two bricks, 
the treehouse is actually adapted to the two by two bricks and then be framed in around uh, the base of the treehouse with various green plate. That made more sense than creating a solid nose plate and placing the treehouse on top. So I modified a bunch of the plate work around the base of the treehouse and then stuck it onto the actual bricks. That's how it used to be in the campsite as well. For example, the treehouse used to have like this little piece of water. It didn't really make sense. So that's all been plated over top of uh, just to make it more cohesive with the actual build. I want to place this and see how it looks before I get too carried away with adding more details, but I've got all my detail parts ready to go here, all sorts of different vegetation and cheese slopes and leaf elements and plates and all different colors that sort of look natural. From afar, I think that's starting to look pretty cool over there. Glad that I was able to fill in that area with green rather than light gray. I've still got to do the blending work around that platform because of course it comes up like six, seven, eight bricks. So I've got to blend in all here, but I'm going to do that all with Lego. I'm not going to do that with any sort of wood structure. And then when I place these, I realize that I've got to do a little bit of blending between the plates because where I put that low ground, you can see I've got to come up a brick there, but that's easy to do. Just lay some bricks there. And then also there's some blending work that has to happen in the foreground as well. I want to keep these all as individual modules. So it's not a big deal if over here it's, you know, a little bit on the low side and then over here it's a little bit different because the table is not perfectly level. It's not really a big deal because it's easy just to blend it in with plates or bricks or whatever it may be. And I did make that platform a little bit smaller than it needs to be just so there's a little bit of overhang with the mills so that the wood doesn't cause any problems and it doesn't have to be like perfectly placed on the table. So if you are going to insert wood platforms in the city or into any city, I would always recommend making it just a little bit small, especially if you're mill splitting stuff. But I think that blends together quite nicely with the vegetation of the snow white plate. However, there's a lot more vegetation and also a lot more animals in the snow white plate right now, but I plan on adding more to these as well. But yeah, I think that blends together nicely. We've got like the big body of water there, then just a little bit of rainwater that's collected in the bottom of the slough. Looks pretty cool. So it's gonna have to be quite steep here. I've only got four studs to work with, but that gravel road is only gonna come to about there. And then I can build up there because this is sort of like where the train is passing through. It's almost like the humans have like blasted out the rock for the train to come through this little valley. I could start to raise the train up and I could have these plates at the same height as this, but I don't know if I want to deal with another train grade going up here because this train is going to pass underneath a mountain over here. And it's also going to pass underneath a mountain there. So if I start going up here, well, that's sort of going to throw off what I want to do over there with platforms and mountains. So that's why I've decided to leave the train at table height. And in the future, I still want to play around with the idea of having a raised train line somewhere. And I think that will sort of be up in the mountains because of course this train could go up and then it could enter the mountain at an elevation. But I just think the ground line should remain on the ground just because Lego RC trains have a really difficult time with grades and you've got to spread the grade out. For example, over here, we built this grade yesterday and it goes up one plate for every 16 studs. So if I want to bring a train up 20 bricks or 10 bricks, you've got to like start it so far back. It's just rather difficult to do and it's really hard on the batteries as well. Unfortunately, I don't have nine volt trains. I would love to invest in nine volt trains and nine volt track one day, but got a lot of track and it's not cheap. So I've decided that I'm going to work on the creek plate that sits beside that elevation there. I just think that this needs to be finished up because it doesn't look good right now. So this is the before. We're going to have a look at the after. Now the reason I don't time lapse all my work is just because the setup and takedown of the camera, the voiceover, the editing process, it takes a little bit longer and I upload every day. So I just sometimes just don't have it in me to time lapse everything. The first thing I decided to do was actually move a bunch of this mills work over. I actually removed a bunch of it here. That allowed me to widen this creek and that's gonna give me the space in these bends here to give it a more natural shape with wedge plates. 
Just needed to be a little bit wider so I have the space to do that. And then I came in here and I finished off this mill's work as well. This was all exposed gray base plate and now it's green. I went ahead and placed hundreds of parts around the edges of the creek there. Got some curved slopes, cheese slopes, miscellaneous green plate, also some flowers. And yeah, I think there's some good like color combinations there. You know, you got some sand green, dark tan, dark brown, a dark gray, light gray, the lime green flowers. And then I did the uh, trans blue tiles on top of the black plate there. Now, my creeks are typically just black underlying plate. I've got a lot of creeks to create. I've got mostly black plate. So I'm probably gonna run with that. I mean, I guess I could mix in some earthy colors maybe, like the dark tan, dark green, maybe some like dark blue and stuff. But I honestly think that the, the black looks really good. It's sort of like the Ninjago City feel. All the underlying plate in Ninjago City is black. And I sort of think it looks good with the trans blue on top. I, I think it looks great. So I've got a blend in the side here. It's gonna be that platform. Now, the platform comes right up to this and then it's right up against the road. So it's gonna get a bit square-ish there. Now I'm a visual person, so I always need to place things in order to plot my next move. But I do think that this corner is gonna be a little bit tricky. There's a lot going on there. We've got the creek, there's the gravel road, not a whole lot of studs to work with on either side. So that might become a bit of a right angle, which I'm not a huge fan of. Could be like a rock face and I could tinker with this mills plate height, just so it doesn't have to go up as high. It just has to go as high as the wood structure and then I can make it more natural there. That might be the move, but if it's a rock face, it could come at an angle like this and turn into the grassy hill and connect to that grassy hill, which is right behind the airstrip. I do like the black plate. I think it looks great from afar. I know that the creek up there is more colorful. We did that with the dark blue, uh, dark azure, and also regular blue. But then as we transition down here, maybe it becomes a little bit deeper and just looks a little bit different. I am gonna have to rip apart all this here because I'm not a huge fan of how wide this is. I think this needs to be a little bit wider and I need to just get rid of these harsh right angles. I do realize that the road is a bit square at this point, like there is a right angle right there, but you can see how I was able to sort of make the contours of the road a little less square with all these wedge plates and I plan on doing that right here. I also plan on placing a structure there and this is gonna be the train yard. So that's why the road goes in this direction. But once we get past the airstrip, it's gonna to start to go at an angle and sort of weave through the countryside just like that uh, creek there. So I think that'll be pretty cool. But for now, I think this area needs to remain like that, specifically the road. Now what I could do to give myself more space here is I could actually move this over 48 studs because nothing is set in stone. This is Lego, everything can move. So for example, I've got two 48 by 48 plates there. I could remove those, I can move this over 48 studs. That's gonna give us more space to do something different back here. And that might be the move. That would actually alleviate a bit of the pressure on that gravel road because maybe I could do a smaller platform that's only 148 by 48 plate, and then there could be more of a gradual transition on the 48 by 48 that's closer to the uh, train track there. That might be the move. Eventually, this whole area is all gonna be raised platform-ish, like these little mini ones all the way along, and there might be some that are different heights. Might be a little bit higher, wouldn't be a little bit lower though. <laughs> that's gonna be more so in the foreground so we can sort of get that force perspective. Everything is gonna be going uphill as we go backward. I decided to bring everything upstairs. It's handy that the Ikea boxes match that platform because I can mock it up up here, right? Get the right height. So I don't think I'm gonna shift everything over just because I know I have a lot of space right now, but eventually I might not. So if I allocate more space, to things like this and more green space, well then guess what? I might run out of room before we blink and I don't want that to happen. Well, it might take longer than a blink. <laughs> so what I decided to do was actually destroy a bunch of this. You might be wondering why my garbage can is open here. I'm sure you know why. <laughs> but I decided to uh, destroy 
a bunch of this and then I built up the rock panels here. So I just put some rock panels in and then I covered them with some green slopes and some other types of slopes. And it's flat there, but it starts to branch out fairly quickly. And then I was able to replicate that on the other side. This is a bit squarish here. I did reduce the height of this to try and help with that. And I did start adding some more uh, slopes and stuff in the water. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. And if it is, well, I could always change it later. I just don't know if it's worth shifting everything over 48 studs just because of that. Hmm. I guess we'll play it by ear. But I decided to build this little bridge here. So I did a nougat plate and then I just did some brown boards on top. I'm gonna add more detail to this and also the gravel road and also the rock work, which will help blend it in even more. And all throughout here, this is not detailed yet. Like this is not <laughs> the type of detail that I'm going for. So eventually I'm gonna detail all of these areas. I'm just trying to come up with the concept right now. I also uh, d did a little arch work underneath here, just underneath the uh, bridge, but I need to go through and add all the trans blue tiles to the black uh, plate underneath these two bridges. But once again, I'm just trying to come up with a concept here that's gonna work because it's a big idea and it's a big project if I move forward with it. So I just gotta make sure that the uh, ideas are correct before moving forward. So you know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna place it and see how it looks. Now I get quite a bit of exercise throughout the day because I go up and down these stairs a lot throughout the day when I'm working on the Lego City, bringing modules upstairs, bringing parts upstairs, doing whatever, right? And there's been a lot of people that uh, have suggested that what I should do is put the shelving upstairs and I should change one of these rooms to my workstation. So rather than having my computer and all my parts upstairs, you should do that here. And then you should have all the shelves up there. Would that be easier? I'll tell you what, it's the same amount of steps because if I'm working on the city over there and I've got to go get parts from this room, uh, it's still the walk way over here to the part bins, which would probably be on the longest wall, which would be right here. Whereas when they're upstairs, all I have to do is just, you know, jaunt up the stairs. It's the same amount of steps. It's just the stairs involved. And you know what? I'm young. The stairs really don't phase me. <laughs> they don't phase me at all. It's just a flight of stairs. It's nothing. And carrying big modules down here is easy because it's a straight shot down the stairs. The stairs are fairly wide and I'm not building modules any larger than four 48 by 48 base plates, like the one that you saw at the beginning of this video. It's no wide the seven dwarves. Also in regards to parts, this base right here, it's not big enough and I don't really want to live underneath the staircase. My name isn't Harry Potter. So what do you think? I think that looks pretty sweet. Pretty happy with it. Can't wait to get that creek done and also the gravel road. Once you get those details added, this place will look pretty sweet. Also all the vegetation. And I need to finish this hill. For now, I just created some like accordion builds using some two by brick. Not the final product. <laughs> but what I could do is leave this mills. And when I build that, I can just pop a little box in there because that'll match up with the height. And then I can support it. I might even be able to fit two boxes in there. And then it'll be on the mills plate so it's not going to wiggle around. And I can lock this box in place. And yeah, I think that'll work out quite nicely. Now that corner there, I think I'm going to leave it like this just because it is a little bit of a harsh right angle there, but I think once I connect that, it sort of takes away from it because that is a nice angle that follows that creek. And I think that'll work. It does look a bit harsh from this angle too, but this gravel road is coming to an end here. So once this gravel road turns and goes over the track and through the tunnel, well then I've got a lot more space to work with so I can make this more gradual back here and figure that out. I like that little bridge, not detailed yet, but I think that works out quite nicely. Pretty sweet. Now the water flows down the mountain and actually connects to the creek. And I think that's a really good spot for the eight studs house as well. And with that, everybody, this is where our Lego city journey comes to an end because I'm going to head home so I can say good night to my kids and then I'll be back in the morning and I'll continue working on 
this countryside project. Man, I'm excited about the countryside. It's coming together. A lot more work to do, but look at that. There's no white showing. There's no gray showing. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> that is so much better. Absolutely fantastic. Also, the wood platform makes all the difference in the world. Feel a lot more satisfied with that. Gonna have to cut some more wood platforms for over here once I figure that out. And also cut some more wood platforms for the center as well. Yeah, exciting times. Everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. I hope you enjoyed this LEGO City update. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out in the near future. Because as always, we're gonna continue working on this LEGO City pretty much daily. Farewell.